Innovaptive is a global leader for industrial connected worker solutions with the next generation connected workforce platform. The platform digitally connects the entire industrial workforce, executives and back office and uses built-in integrations to connect your SAP, IBM Maximo and other back office systems with field-ready mobile solutions. Our zero-code configurator tool gives developers or non-developers complete freedom to customize and build mobile environments without any coding experience. First, let's look at how easy it is to process and work on an assigned work order on the M work order application. I'll play the role of a maintenance technician and I can see all the jobs that are assigned to me. I can see this by either by status, by priority, or work center. I can tap into the list of work orders that are assigned to me and pull up the very first work order that I need to execute. I can see the equipment or the functional location that this is assigned to. I can look at the priority as well as you know the long text on this work order. It has two operations assigned to me that I need to execute. There's one part that has been planned on this and it also has a picture of the component that needs to be inspected and worked on. In this case, this is a hydraulic motor and I can see where the issue lies that has been marked by my planner on this work order. So let's start working on this. So I'm gonna select the operation and what I'll do is I'll start a timer. The timer helps accurately track how much time a technician is spending on a specific operation, which helps the measurement of his wrench time. So I'm gonna minimize my clock at the top and continue fixing. So I'm gonna look at all my forms that have been added on this work order that need to be completed. So I'm gonna check off a few of these boxes, uh, which is an example of a digital form uh, within this work order. Uh, I'm gonna save this as a draft, and I'm gonna go and look at the components, the parts. Because I'm using this part, I'm gonna select this part and confirm the consumption of this part as well. What I'm doing right now is posting a goods issue in my system. So once I've completed my task, I'm gonna click on my timer, and I'm gonna end this job. As you can see, the start time and the finish time are recorded systematically, and all I need to do is click on save to post my time on this work order. I can do the same thing on the second task. So I'll click on confirm, and now what I'll do is I'll post a manual confirmation, which means I'm actually keying in the time that I spent on this task manually instead of using the timer. And work order gives you the option to either automatically track time or use the manual confirmation. Once I'm through all of my tasks, uh, I can go back to my screen, check off all the tasks that have been completed, and then go through the work order and mark this as complete. So I'm gonna hit on complete, and in this case, it's asking me to validate my information, and I can hit submit to complete this work order and move on to the next job. Operations, select item 16, confirm, manual confirmation, components, attachments, select item 15, select item one, Navigate back, select item 14, select item 15, OK, select item 17, dictation, John, accept, Select item 18, select item 26, page down, 
Select item 17. One, two, three. Next. Next. Navigate back. Draft. OK. Submit. OK. Navigate home. My programs. M work order. Navigate back. Select item 17. Select item 2. Notification. Select item 14. Select item 16. Open camera. Take photo. Save. OK. Save. Next, we'll look at how easy it is to locate an equipment on the M Workorder solution and actually open up uh, a maintenance notification. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my equipment search. I'm going to use the OCR capability here to scan an equipment number. So what I did was I just scanned an equipment tag and it automatically read the text off of the tag. So I can use that to search for this specific equipment from my asset history, right? So here I can see, you know, this piece of packaging equipment. I can see the location, the model number, who the manufacturer is. I can even pull up the full equipment hierarchy here. So this shows my full equipment and functional location hierarchy, and I can see the entire breakdown. If I want to navigate to another piece of equipment, I can just click there to go down there. So what you see on this screen, everything in red is a functional location. Anything in blue is an equipment number. And anything in green is actually the bill of material attached to that. I can also see the pictures or attachments that are linked to this equipment. So here I have a PDF document, which is a procedure document. I can also see the image of the equipment itself down here on my production floor as well as all of my other details from SAP are going to be downloaded onto my tablet. I'll click on the equipment dashboard to give you a more holistic view of this asset. Uh, so this is what we call our asset dashboard. It lists all of my work order and notification history. I can see what are my recent work orders that are due on this equipment. I can see my recent notifications. In addition, I can see all of my measurement details over here, and I have graphical capability over here to illustrate the measurements that have been captured on this equipment. Finally, down below, I have all of my PDFs and attachments linked to this equipment. What I will do from here is actually create a notification to show a fault that's being captured on this equipment. I'm going to put some text here, call it a leaking valve. You'll see by default, the equipment number is automatically captured on here. If I want to change it, I can quickly pull up the hierarchy and change the equipment number if needed. I can put in my long text here. So I'm going to pull a template and search for a template here that I can use. So here I have pre-built templates for creating notifications. So I'm going to use this specific template and then save that on there. And then I'm also going to go and select the priority for this notification. I'm going to set this as very high. I can either manually select my priority and set that here, or I can use the configurable risk assessment feature on the M Workorder application. So here in the risk assessment, you can define what questions need to be asked to the technician. So I'm going to select a few of these answers. So the first one is the consequence to people. The second one is consequence to asset damage. Third is consequence to the environment. 
I'm going to select that. And the fourth one is the consequence to the reputation. So once I select all of these values, you'll see the overall risk level is defined right at the top. And this says complete by two weeks, which is fine. I'm going to say OK to my risk, no risk assessment. Next, I'm going to check on, are there duplicate notifications that have already been created? So I can check the notification history to see if there's any duplicate notifications. I don't see any. So I can proceed to my next step, which is to capture a photo or a video. So here, I'll choose an existing photo from my library. I'll mark up the issue on here and save this image for my notification. In addition, I'm going to add an item code and a cost code to show the damage that has been associated with this equipment. So I'm going to select my damage group. And then I can say, call this as a leak. And then I'm going to hit Save on this. So now I have all of my details entered on this notification. If I want to make changes or edit, I can quickly go and use my touch capability on here to make those changes. Once I'm happy with what I've entered and I'm ready to submit this, I can click on Save and submit this notification. This generates a notification in SAP in real time and captures the attachment and loads that on the notification number that now I have associated on here. Now let's see the mapping and the GIS capability on the M Work Order solution. I can select the map by clicking on the map icon on the bottom of my screen here. So I'm going to click on the map icon. And on this specific scenario, I have the ability to choose between a standard Google Map interface or I also have the GIS mapping capability, which I can click on right here. On the GIS map, I can zoom in or out to select the area that I want to work through. So you'll see I have, in addition to my regular map layers, I also have my work orders and my notification shown as featured layers here. So what we've done is we've integrated the GIS map with equipment functional location, work order, and notification information. So I'm going to select the asset that I need to work on. And then I can look at all the features here. So I'm going to select the main here. And as I select that, you'll see down below, I have action buttons that take me back to the M work order application to create a notification. So if I want to create a notification directly from an object on my GIS map, I can click on the Create Notification, and it takes me to the Create Notification form. I'm going to exit this back and focus down on the map layer and show you some of the additional capabilities. Here, I can go in and choose between a regular map or a satellite map uh, and switch back and forth between the two. I have redlining capabilities on my map, so if I want to create a new red line, I can go through and select a section and create a red line on here if I need to. I have turn-by-turn -turn direction capabilities. So if I want directions to a specific equipment, I can select the equipment and click on the car button at the bottom to get my driving directions. This seamless integration between the GIS map and the EAM system provides uh, our users a single interface to be able to get all of the information they're looking for on their device. At Innovaptive, we believe simplifying the user experience is key to driving adoption of the application among your maintenance teams. So we've made the application very simple to use, as well as there's a lot of features in here that's going to drive user adoption. Number one among that is the configurable font size. So here there's a slider where the users can, can select what font size they want to use the application. This is important because in your scenario or in, in your business, you're going to have a lot of workers that use gloves, and they want to be able to adjust what shows up on their screens. When I click on this question mark here, you'll see my context-based help screens. So this is going to automatically change 
based on what screen the user is on. So for example, when I'm in my list of uh, work orders and then I click on the help button, it's going to show me the help text for my work orders. So this is also going to help your users get trained on the application as well as learn the application much faster. In addition, you can also configure and customize all of your help content. The next thing is the reference document functionality. One of the important things is to be able to provide all of the information they're looking for in, in one space. So here I can store all of my PDFs or my images or my documents from my repository to be able to be accessed anytime when needed. So all the user needs to do is tap on this menu and select the reference documentation. The last thing I want to talk about is the offline capability. We have a built-in seamless online and offline transactional engine that offers a seamless sync whenever the user is connected to the network. So when the user goes offline, it's automatically going to switch to an offline mode. But when he's back online, it's going to switch back to the connected mode, and it's automatically going to refresh the application to the backend system. MWork Order offers enhanced capabilities and simplified user flows that streamline job performance and increase efficiency.